In this example, I'm going to show you how to pay, take a picture, and I'd like you to do the one smile, which is on its learning, and take it and put it into Desmos. Okay? So Desmos will probably default and look like something like this. And all you have to do is take your picture and drag it in. Easy as that. As you click on your picture, I will tell you this is a sphere. The happiest face kind of looks like a parabola. And the distance between here and here is 2.5. So the outside, or how you can resize it, bigger and smaller. This one in the middle allows us to move it. So if I know the distance between the top and the two tops of the smile, then I can try to adjust it using these, and now I have it one, two, and a half. This smile is approximately a parabola. It's on a sphere though, so lots of real life applications you could talk about why that didn't quite work out so perfectly, and that's part of what the project's about. The problem with choosing this particular example, easy to work with Desmos, drag and drop, resize with any of these eight on the outsides of the box, move around with this one in the middle, but I don't really have any prediction questions. So this was not the best example to start with, but it, the point of this video is just to show you how to get the picture into Desmos, drag, drop, resize with the outsides, move around with this thing right here. Okay, and then think about your scale, making it real life. So this was 2.5, and I'm getting pretty close to 2.5 there. In this example, I'm going to show you how to get an image into Autograph, okay? So first of all, very important, you have to click this equal aspect mode, very important, equal aspect mode. That rescales both things with the same scale. If you don't do that, then obviously it, your photo or video isn't gonna make any sense. So scale it as one-to-one, -one. Then what we do is we take our object and insert image. We'll have our photo saved somewhere. Mine is downloaded from It's Learning called Kerbis B-Ball Shot. We open it and there it is. Now there's a couple things. All the numbers in behind here disappeared. So when you double click on the image, you want to make it transparent. That's probably pretty good and we can get rid of that. Then the second thing is, back it up a little bit, okay. All right, now we can move it around in a similar fashion as we did with Desmos. What I know is that the height from the top of my head to here is one. So I need to figure out how to use the resizing on the sides until I'm one. So you need something in your photo to help you set your scale. Mm, almost. There we go. Okay, also, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five. It would be nice to have those numbers. So I'm going to take the wrench and change the spacing of the numbers to be every one and press OK. Good. As I have set my scale, I can now have a look. Maybe I want the release point of the ball to be the origin. And at this point, now I can zoom in if I want and get a better screenshot. So, well, probably a bit too far there. And let's take that. Grab our arrow again. And that looks like something I can work with. Notice my scale came with me as I zoomed in. That didn't change. It's still one meter from here to here. I can change my axes all through this wrench here with the labels. So I can call this horizontal distance 
and this vertical distance, etc., etc. Okay. So that's how to get a photo into Autograph. Again, we can change these numbers to show up as we like, and I can force it to count every one or every half or whatever I am interested in. All right, so in the last video, we showed you how to get a picture into Autograph. It was a better picture than the picture we put into Desmos because I could predict, for example, did the basketball go in the hoop? This time, we're going to insert a video into Logger Pro, and you go to Insert, Movie, and you find where you saved it, and you can download this one from It's Learning, and just to have a practice go and follow along, and wherever you save it from It's Learning it will be, mine just happens to be here, and it sort of takes over the screen a bit, but it's got this really nice feature where you auto arrange and it tidies it all up. Now you can see the video goes like this, it's just this, clicking, okay? So it's another decent project idea because you can't see it, but you can make the prediction when will the ball hit the ground, okay? We also know that I, in this case, my height from here to here is 1.2. So how are you going to get that involved and how are you going to get some points? Let's move the video up a little bit. There, stop there. And there you can go frame by frame there. It leaves my hand. Let's go back a little bit. Perfect. Okay. On these three dots is your analysis. So you click on those. And here's a ruler, set scale. So I know that the distance from the top of my head to my knee is... 120 centimeters. Okay, that will set the scale for the video. Then I can click on this, and as I click on the thing that I'm following, you can see on the right hand side that data is being generated. Always try to click on the same spot and Now the ball is starting to come down. I'm doing this rather quickly so you can see there's some errors to talk about. Also the ball is pretty pixely there. It's going pretty quick. Okay. There's two pieces of information being graphed here. Actually there's quite a few. And as we have a look at it, you've got x centimeters, y centimeters, that's my vertical and horizontal height, and I've got time. I could look at only the height over time, so let's take off this, and now I see the height of the ball over time, and you see that time is in seconds, but it doesn't start at zero, so you can rescale time, auto scale, but actually you can change it to make it start at zero if you want, and here my Y is in centimeters, that's nice. So I can see things like my vertex. In addition, if I wanted, and I was not interested in the time that it hit the ground, but I was interested in the X distance it took to hit the ground, I could just change it there. 